Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hand of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. is from Isaiah chapter 52 verses 13 to 53. See my servant shall prosper, he shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him with no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we have accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By our perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We call this day Good Friday. How dare we? How dare we? What's good about today? The symbol of the cross is oh so familiar to us by now, but don't be lulled to sleep. Don't be sedated by familiarity. The cross is not good. The cross is a shameful, cruel, and barbaric thing. At one time, thousands and thousands were slowly killed on crosses like this one. So how can this day be called good? A day where death takes center stage before this symbol of inhumanity to humanity. And what's more, in this story that we are about to hear in a moment, the passion of our Lord, the story of one particular man's death on the cross in gory detail, the story of blood spilled, the crown of thorns, mocking and whipping and spitting and scourging and piercing skin and the slow agonizing death. Again, aren't we all forced to ask, how dare we call this day good? Fellow Christians, you're being asked to take a huge leap of faith today. Because the only way you can dare to call this day good is if you are able to somehow say, this cross, this day is good because God did something with it. Despite of and in face of the darkness of it all, God was present on that day and at work. The usual signs of God's presence were long gone. There was no beauty that day. There was no joy, no majesty, no power, no peace. There was only agony and injustice and betrayal and abuse and cruelty. Way back in 1949, the writer Dorothy Sayers had this to say about the goodness of Good Friday. She said, for whatever reason God chose to make us as we are, as limited and suffering humanity, subject to sorrow and death, at least God had the honesty and courage to, to take his own medicine. And she continues, whatever game God is playing with his creation, at least God has kept his own rules and played fair. God can take nothing from humanity that he has not taken from himself. In Jesus, God has gone through the whole of human experience, from the trivial irritations of family life and the cramping restrictions of hard work and lack of money to the worst horrors of pain and humiliation, defeat, despair, and death. When he was a man, God played the man. God was born in poverty and died in disgrace and thought it well worthwhile. So again I ask, how can we call this day good? Only if faith moves us to see and believe that in the hell of this day, God is present and at work. Today's Passion Gospel from Luke that you're about to hear goes into great detail about how Jesus died. But this story is not recorded to simply give us a gruesome blow by blow every year of one man's dying hours. To simply read the story of one man's death details year after year would be pointless. That is why the obvious needs to be repeated this morning. And the obvious is this, my friends, that Jesus died for a reason. And the reason is summed up supremely in one particular verse in Luke's story. One short phrase that says this, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. There was the difference. This changed everything. The temple, you see, was the place where God lived for Israel. It was at the center of the temple was a room called the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant sat, which was where God sat. And only one man, the high priest, could enter. And only on one day of the year, the Day of Atonement. And he entered to make a sacrifice for the sins of the people. But on this Good Friday, 
everything changed. At that moment, that is the moment of Jesus' death, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Torn. No more walls, no more barriers, no more curtains of separation. In the dying of Jesus, one sacrifice was paid for all people for all time. Now what does this all mean for you? How does this tearing of the curtain reach into your life and mine? Simply this. If there are still walls, if there remains any barrier between you and your God, be clear about something today. These are not God's walls. These are not God's curtains. These are no longer God's locked doors. God did not build them. The bricks are of your own building. The barriers are of my own creating. As of this Friday, no sin, no darkness, no failure, no death, no pain, no betrayal, no chains, no heartbreak, as real and as toxic as all of these are in our real world. None of this can ever hang as a curtain to separate you from the one who made you, loved you, died for you. Behold the cross, and behold the tearing the crumbling, the collapsing of all that separates you from your God in Jesus. In Jesus, the barriers are gone. The curtain is torn in two. So I ask one more time, how do we call this day good? How dare we? We dare to do that first because we see and behold that God's heart and body is bound up in the cruel and heartless cross before us. That God is there even somehow. God is there in Jesus. God is present in the horror. And secondly, we call this day good as we hear the tearing of the curtain and make it our own. The cross becomes now the open door, the bridge for God's love to come pouring out for you. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. In other words, let me put it another way. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The temple is torn. We dare to call this day good. See where God meets you now. Hear what God does for you. Dare to call this day good and wait. The best is yet to come, because the third day is on its way. Now hear the passion of our Lord and taste and see the goodness of our God. Amen. be seated. Then the assembly arose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. And then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he'd heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. 
Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. And then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other because before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he's done nothing to deserve death, and I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I'll therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted, and he released the man they'd asked for, the one who'd been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. And as they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? Two others also were criminals, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he's the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. 
But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Look to Jesus, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and was taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. brothers and sisters for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty
Almighty and eternal God, you've shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Susan and Larry, our bishops, for our pastor, Randy, for all servants of the church, for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you've called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church, increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and Sarah and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. consigned to death, thereby taking every human struggle and the suffering of every age to the cross. And by his holy wounds we have been healed. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We rejoice, Almighty Father, in our Lord's life and holy passion, his resurrection and his ascension into glory. And we trust in his promise to come again when, when we, with all your people, shall sing our hosannas to him at our joyful resurrection. Send now, O God, your holy and life-giving spirit upon us and upon this bread of heaven and this cup of blessing, that in receiving Christ's most precious body and blood, we may be united in the forgiveness of sins and in that final hope of glory and praise with your Son. Gather the church from every time and every place into the everlasting peace and freedom won by Christ, as we acclaim through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to his table.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the next hymn.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.